Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and we live in an age where if a movie releases and does well, then it will always have a sequel that nobody asked for. But the thing is, that doesn't actually apply to the movie that we're going to be looking at today, because the movie that we're going to be looking at today, whilst it may be a sequel movie, it is a sequel to a movie that did not do well. It is a sequel to a movie that nobody asked for. And it is a sequel that nobody asked for. It is called The Next Level. Now this is a movie about the Earth being flat, because the people that made it, they think that the Earth is flat. They try to frame it as a documentary, but we all know that it's a comedy. Now I have not seen this movie, nor have I seen the entirety of the first movie. In fact, I started responding to the first movie, but halfway through the second video I kind of got sidetracked and never finished that video. But this time I will be trying to respond to the entire thing. Not in one video though, because that, that would be too long. Anyway, let's dive into this movie and hope that it's better than a J.M. Truth Productions movie. The one thing globe believers need to understand is that you don't just take the spinning ball Earth and flatten it out and put it back in the heliocentric model. Like it's just the only misfit planet and it's flat and the rest of the planets are round. No flat earther has ever said that, no flat earther will ever say that, because it's not what we believe. This is partially because, well, flat earth is quite silly and people have never heard of it. So, if you tell them something silly, they're gonna think of a silly version of your silly thing. The Earth isn't a pancake floating in outer space, and you will never hear a flat earther say that. And if you would ever actually take the time to study it for yourself, or hear a flat earther through, then you would find that it's much different and things would actually make more sense. Well actually, things make a whole lot less sense, especially seeing as I am someone from a country called New Zealand. Here in New Zealand, the sun will rise in the southeast. It will then head north, and then set in the southwest. This would just simply not be possible if the Earth was flat and the Sun was circuiting around the North Pole because the Sun would be heading in a northern direction relative to me as it sets. They've got the narrative controlled where anyone that goes to search for this they're gonna see pancakes floating up in space, you know, and it turns people away. Or they see a snow globe. A snow globe out in the middle of space with water falling off the sides and they're like, what is this? It turns them away. I mean, it's not too far off what flat Earthers say that the Earth looks like. In fact, Quite a few Flat Earthers say that the Earth has a dome over it. And Flat Earthers have been selling things that look like this. Are Flat Earthers in on the conspiracy to make Flat Earth look silly as well? The mainstream agenda was to push their false narrative, all these hit pieces on Flat Earth. 2016, 2017, uh, that was pretty much the end of the YouTube era uh, where we could actually find real evidence, real you know, content. Any search engine, it's, the algorithms are, are suited to their favor. You're, you're gonna see all the hit pieces, you're gonna see all the stuff that's there to debunk flat earth so it's just uh, it's almost impossible to get the real information so what flat earthers do not realize is that when you search flat earth on youtube the videos that come up are the videos that are most popular this is why back in 2015 and 2016 the videos that came up when you search flat earth would have been pro flat earth videos because not a lot of people had heard of flat earth back then then as flat earth got mainstream attention media outlets wanted to cash in on it. And because they are media outlets, they have a far larger audience. And because of this, they got many more views. They got far more attention than your typical pro Flat Earther video. This is just how it works. You do not need a conspiracy in order to explain this. You know, I've said that so many times that it's actually starting to feel like a bit of a catchphrase to me. Maybe I need to put it on a shirt. YouTube played their part in it and not just cherry picking which videos they wanted to show, but deciding whether or not they wanted you to subscribe to somebody. So on several occasions and with several different content creators, I'd press the subscribe button to then find out several days or several weeks later that I couldn't find that, that content creator, assuming they'd either been deleted or they'd been censored beyond belief. Um, and of course they had been because my subscription that was previously made was no longer there. And I know that I hadn't unsubscribed to anybody. And then resubscribing, you'd find again that down the line that the same things reoccurred. So this is not an issue that just affects flat earthers. This is an issue that affects everyone. If you are a content creator on YouTube, you're probably going to have people that get automatically unsubscribed from you. Now why exactly this is happening, I'm not sure. It could just be that it's an error that is causing some accounts to get unsubscribed from others. Because we do know that occasionally, people will lose subscribers because YouTube will go ahead and purge a whole lot of bots that are made for the sole purpose of subscribing to people. And when this happens, it is possible that real subscriptions could end up being deleted. There's a major campaign by Google and YouTube and all of these corporate uh, lying companies to discredit the Flat Earth. Why do they have that disclaimer under every video dealing with the topic of Flat Earth that it is an archaic 
antiquated, outdated model that the ancients used to believe in. Of course, the ancients were stupid. They didn't know how to build Gothic cathedrals and they didn't know how to build cities and pyramids. So the reason why YouTube puts a banner underneath of Flat Earth videos is because they want to keep their advertisers around. If advertisers decide, well, YouTube is supporting Flat Earth, I do not want to advertise on their platform, well, YouTube is going to lose a lot of revenue from that. So they've taken steps to say, hey, we do not support crazy conspiracy theories. Also, on the point about the ancients, ancients only had a fraction of the knowledge that we have today. So I'm quite confident in saying that we are definitely smarter today than the ancients. The problem is people that think that Flat Earth is stupid think Flat Earth is stupid because they're thinking of a stupid Flat Earth and they ridicule and make fun of Flat Earthers. It's absolutely ridiculous. Of course we are thinking of a stupid Flat Earth because Flat Earth is quite stupid. So we don't have a choice but to do that. Of course, what he means is that we are not thinking of Flat Earth in the way that he's thinking of it. But the thing is, I have looked into all the Flat Earth claims. Not a single Flat Earth claim holds up to scrutiny. So that is why I am not a Flat Earther. Since 2015, the content providers of Flat Earth have had a living hell. We have been ridiculed, we have been trolled, we have been censored beyond belief by YouTube. Uh, it's really difficult to get the truth out there. YouTube controls the algorithm. Who owns YouTube? Google. Th these are these big corporations that came in and said, the flat earth is getting way too big. People are finding this out. We don't want them to find this out. This will just completely destroy our agenda that we've worked so hard for. We're losing it because of our own technology that we created. So they had to get involved. Withholding information and knowledge is a form of control. The videos are still there. You can still watch Flat Earth videos. Just Flat Earth videos aren't as heavily recommended as they used to be. And it seems as though occasionally Flat Earth videos will get recommended, like Mitchell from Australia's videos, for example. But the reason why YouTube did that was because advertisers do not want to advertise on a platform that is spreading misinformation. That is all that's going on here. You do not need a conspiracy to explain it. Now, for new people coming into the subject, if you research Flat Earth, the Google um, analytic will give you government hate propaganda against the Flat Earth truth. I mean, Google works in a very similar way to YouTube, except Google tries to give you the most relevant things. Now, there are a lot of other variables that go into it, but at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up on a site that Google thinks is more trustworthy. If you go to Google and try to find anything Flat Earth related, then the first thing that's going to pop up is the Flat Earth Society. And that is something that has absolutely nothing to do with this movement. In fact, it's um, a completely made up organization in order to deter anybody looking for some sort of truth. So that you'd first of all get to that page, you'd see these ridiculous accusations and this spinning disc illusion that's going upwards in space that I can assure you nobody believes in. Now, I will admit that the Flat Earth Society does seem like a parody of Flat Earth, but so do Flat Earthers. I have heard Flat Earthers say stuff that you'd think would be complete parody. And this is why for a lot of people, the Flat Earth Society and Flat Earthers are one and the same thing. If the globe model was as strong as they claim to be, then there wouldn't be so much concern with anybody talking about a stationary Earth model. Now, the reason why there is so much concern with people talking about Flat Earth is simply because it spreads misinformation. Flat Earth is something that is just completely wrong, yet for some reason, people believe in it. And I do think that a lot of the reason why people believe that the Earth is flat is simply because they've been lied to by Flat Earthers. When people hear something, not everyone will go ahead and check if it's true. Not everyone wants to go ahead and check if it's true either. Now everything's fine in court until somebody walks in with a load of shit on you. Everything's fine until somebody out there has evidence that's going to prove you guilty. guilty. Although Flat Earthers don't actually have evidence. They may think that they have evidence, but that's not the same thing as actually having evidence. As I said before, I've heard every claim from Flat Earthers, and they are all wrong. For example, with the documents that you showed there, things are getting taken out of context. A good example is this one here, where it says the method is limited, however, to application where a flat, non-rotating Earth may be assumed. You see, that doesn't actually say that the Earth is flat, because the implication there is that there are times when you cannot use a flat, non-rotating Earth. And that's when you start acting suspicious, that's when you start panicking, that's when you start putting con uh, damage control out there, which is inevitably what these bots are, what these trolls are on social media, and of course, the algorithms. You gotta love how they've got FTFE, MC Toon, and Professor Dave in this. And she is implying that these people are damage control, and I wonder if she's implying that I'm damage control too, because I debunk Flat Earthers. I feel that it's worth mentioning that the OSI thing that we did quite a few years back was a joke. We're not getting paid by NASA. 
If I was getting paid by NASA, then trust me, I'd be making a lot less videos than I do, and I'd probably also cover a lot less topics than I do. Three videos a week isn't always the easiest thing to achieve. This is just a new lie that was started in the 20s, and even before then, they weren't really teaching anything about the world and where we were, it was just common knowledge. So I'm gonna be like a flat earther here and just give her way too much benefit of the doubt and assume that what she means by the 20s is the 20s BC. Although even if we do give her that, she's still wrong. Because people have figured out that the Earth is a globe since 500 BC. And I know this because a flat earther told me that back in 500 BC, the Roman Catholic Church was burning anyone that thought that the Earth was flat. One of the main arguments that globe believers come at you with is we've known for 2,000 years, Aristophanes figured it out with his sticks and shadows. Well, you might want to tell Victoria that then because she seems to have missed the memo. Also, Eratosthenes didn't figure out the shape of the Earth, he measured the size of the Earth, two different things. Well, Aristophanes may or may not have been a real mathematician. He figured out the shape of the Earth. That would have made him the Michael Jordan of mathematicians, but nobody ever mentioned him in a book until the mid-1900s. Again, Eratosthenes did not figure out the shape of the Earth. People had figured out that it was a globe a few hundred years before he was born. All he did was measure the size of the Earth, and it's been done plenty of times since then. What's crazy is I've talked to some elderly people and they've told me that back in their day when they were in school, they didn't even learn about people like Copernicus or Galileo. Everything's up for grabs at this point. People like Christopher Columbus and any other figure in history could be totally false or created just for some sort of agenda. Well, here's the thing. I do not remember learning about Copernicus or Galileo either. Galileo might have come up once or twice when learning about Jupiter, but I don't remember it. Most of what I know about Copernicus and Galileo come from what I've seen in entertainment. I do certainly remember learning about Christopher Columbus Columbus though because he's deemed quite important because he did a stupid thing. And no, the stupid thing wasn't thinking that the earth was smaller than it actually is, it was finding America. But also, this person is suggesting that at least a decent portion of history is fake. And he's doing this without evidence. And you know what? I could do the same thing. I could say that Samuel Robotham never existed and he was just made up by Eric Dubay. It's, that'd be funny if it was true because it would mean that Eric Dubé is even more of a liar than he is. If I really wanted to, I could actually create a whole rabbit hole about this that has so many things that aren't actually true and it would still make more sense than Flat Earth. This is everywhere. We found somebody in uh, Croatia. They said they were teaching Flat Earth through the 1930s. You know what? I'm definitely going to trust someone who's 105 years old at the minimum and who is definitely not a troll because trust me, bro. Most people think that this flat Earth versus globe Earth has been going back and forth for thousands of years. No, it has not. This is a brand new deception. You know, he actually got something right for once. It's something that's relatively new. People have known that the Earth is a globe for a couple thousands of years, and only recently have people thought, you know, what if the Earth were flat? They come up with these stories, these fictional stories, fictional characters, to reinforce that we live on a ball. All of our globe provers, Galileo, Aristophanes, Copernicus, the pictures of them show that they're masons, but I contend that we don't even know if they're real. All of our history is a lie. Okay, I finally figured out why this movie is called The Next Level. Because this is some next level bullshit. Because that's what these people are advocating. They're advocating that anyone in history that thinks that the Earth is a globe was just made up. So they're definitely going to need some extraordinary evidence for that, more than I made it up. Nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. I met people that said that they were taught Flat Earth in the early 1960s in school. They were taught Flat Earth and Globe Earth. And then it kind of just went away. You know, it'd be really nice if he actually had any evidence because currently, we just have to take his word that he's right. Now, fortunately, I do know people that went to school in the 1960s and they all said that they were taught that the Earth was a globe. They were never taught that the Earth was flat. And there are probably a lot of people that are watching this that went to school around the same time and were taught the same thing. So it sounds like someone might be telling you a few lies there. I interviewed Ruth, a 102-year-old woman, back in February of 2020, and she was taught Flat Earth uh, in public school in Connecticut. Tell me your name. Ruth E. Ruth, and how old are you today? 102. 102. So you were born in? 1918. 1918. And um, we were just talking, and I asked you what, what shape the Earth is, and what did you say? 
What were you taught in school when I in elementary school? I was taught in school that the earth was flat. Where did you go to school, Ele elementary school? I went to Spook Glen School in Hamden, Connecticut. So there's no way to verify if she was actually taught that. There may have been a teacher who was a flat earther that tried to teach their students that the earth is flat. The problem with this whole narrative that they're trying to build though is Samuel Robotham. He died in 1884 and a large part of what he did is he challenged the scientific establishment because he did not believe that the earth was a globe. Now sure, the scientific establishment and primary school are two separate things. However, the scientific establishment holds much more credibility than someone who says that they believe that the earth was flat because they learnt it in primary school back in 1918. So how does it make you feel to realise that you were right as a kid? It makes me feel better. I mean, she's wrong. We know that the earth is not flat and we have known that the earth is not flat for thousands of years. It does make you feel better, right? Oh, it makes me feel alive. My whole, oh my god, that is such a, my whole life, I believe, yes. you know, what I was taught. That's and then right. when I discovered the flat earth. You feel better you, about because it. Because we are the center of creation. That's right. We are important. That's right. We are here. We are God's children. And then all the problems that are happening in this world today. I'll give you some good news. A lot of the problems that they report on the news aren't even real. That's right. You know, that's right. They're just keeping us in fear. Keeping up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's right. I understand that. I understand. They just say what they want people to know. The thing is, though, just because you feel a certain way about something doesn't mean that it's true, and it doesn't mean that it's false either. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons why misinformation spreads so fast. It spreads so fast because it makes people feel a certain way. And Flat Earth is really no different in that respect, because let's be honest, thinking that you are right and that everyone else is wrong because they've been lied to, and you are one of the few people that has managed to see past the deception, it does have a certain appeal to it, doesn't it? And the reason why I know this is because that's how I feel when it comes to certain things like when we discovered when the Earth was a globe. Knowing that the debate 500 years ago wasn't about the shape of the Earth, but was instead about whether the Sun went around the Earth or whether the Earth went around the Sun, well, it does feel good to know that. Especially seeing as a lot of people don't have that really basic knowledge. But the difference between myself and a flat earther is that if you can show that I'm wrong, then I'll change what I believe. That we never went to the moon, that that was all fake. Is that right? That's correct. I saw that all happening. Yeah, so did I, and we all believed it, but that was just to reinforce that people to believe they can live on a ball, they can walk on a ball. You know, something that I have wanted people to do for ages is to just simply fake a moon landing. It should be really easy if it were fake. Now, of course, you do have to limit yourself to the technology or the equivalent of the technology that was available back in 1969, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue, should it? Rockefeller uh, seems to have a role in this. He started the General Education Board and continued being involved with the educational system. The fact of the matter is, the people that have been in control, they're in control now, and they're going to continue to be in control whether they pass it down or change the name, whatever it may be. But yeah, I mean, whenever Rockefeller's name is tied to something, it's always something to question, that's for sure. Except the General Education Board had nothing to do with primary schools and was around from 1902 to 1964. It also primarily funded education in the southern states, and when it came to high school, it only funded high schools within the southern states. That's a huge red flag for me, that they can come in and change everything we know, all of history, and turn it into deception, and keep teaching deception over and over and over again until it becomes the norm. Oh, you mean kind of like the exact same thing that you're doing right now in this movie? The same man who said that he wanted a nation of workers and not a nation of thinkers. This was the same person who was found guilty of antitrust violations around the turn of the 20th century. He then went on to get his fingers in all of the education systems. Um, of course, with the promise of, I'll give you money, I'll make sure that your school has everything that it needs as long as you push these textbooks. And I can understand why that is not a good thing. I am not a fan of people just being bought up for work. But you don't need to lie to people about the shape of the earth in order to do that. All you need to do is teach them things that will make them want to work. Now this should tell you something, why we can't talk about, literally, the thing that we're standing on. Why is that? Well, we can talk about the thing that we're on, it's just that you're wrong. Knowing that there is a creator, absolutely, that is one of the main reasons to hide this. But, you know, at the same time, um, it's, it's nowhere in near comparison when a billion people find out that there's more land. Ah, so they're now going down the more land route, which makes me understand what that last section was for. 
is to stop people from asking the obvious question of, if we only found out about Antarctica in the 19th century, then why did they say that the Earth was a globe before then? Oh, and let's not forget that they've given us zero evidence that Galileo or Copernicus was fake, and actually, they've given us zero evidence throughout this entire thing. It's about hidden land. I think there's possible they could be hiding land in here somewhere with us. And I think that the Antarctica Treaty is very, very, very sinister and there must be something else going on. The Antarctic Treaty is very, very sinister and there must be something going on. He says that like in the Antarctic Treaty it says something about we have forced all the penguins to hold AK-47s to stop anyone from getting in. Now I wonder, are they going to tell us what the Antarctic Treaty says? cherry pick from the Antarctic Treaty, or tell everyone to do their own research on the Antarctic Treaty. They went really, really, really tough with their implementation of the, you know, the Antarctic Treaty and everything else, and just to keep people away from the truth. They didn't want people to know about more land. Now they haven't actually mentioned what the Antarctic Treaty says. They've only just said, you know, because of the Antarctic Treaty, you can't go across Antarctica to see if there's more land on the other side. The Antarctic Treaty doesn't stop you from doing that. However, it's probably a bad idea because the land on the other side of Antarctica has been discovered. If I were to go across Antarctica right now, I would find land that has been discovered. It's called Africa. Haven't we been fighting over land forever? Isn't that what always happens? Countries fighting over land, but not on the outskirts of Antarctica. Oh, no, no, no. No fighting there. They're all in agreement. You can't go there. You can't explore any of it. The thing about fighting over land though is that there usually is some kind of geopolitical reason for fighting over it. It could be for oil, it could be to connect areas, it could be to try and dissuade a nation from doing something, or it could be to try and get some kind of negotiating power over another country. When it comes to Antarctica, well, what is there to actually fight over? I know, the ice business is just booming right now with climate change. That treaty was in effect in 1959. It can't even be questioned until the year 2041. The longest lasting treaty uh, that all the world signed on to at the same time and is still in place. So firstly, not all countries have signed on to the Antarctic Treaty. And secondly, of the countries that have done so, not all of them did so at the same time. Canada did so in 1988. Antarctica is the container of our world oceans. What is beyond Antarctica? Um, why is the government hiding Antarctica from us? Why is Antarctica completely off limits except for taking a tour of a little peninsula off of South America, which is nothing. The thing is, you can go to Antarctica for quite a few reasons, and when you get there, there's not a lot that's stopping you from doing what you want. In fact, there's no law in Antarctica. Now, if you were to do something that's illegal in most countries, then you could possibly face charges when you return, but whilst you are in Antarctica, yeah, there are no laws there. And people go, well, you can go to Antarctica. We spent months trying to actually do it. Yeah. I was going to send a crew. They won't call back. You can't even go there. There's one peninsula where you look at penguins. So exactly. I, and then you think, oh, I would, oh, I have some friends that went to the fucking South Pole. Yeah. Yeah. They, they put them uh, in that little fucking island with penguins. You can't yeah, just, but, you went to Antarctica and you walked around it. It's like being in New Jersey and say, saying you were chilling in California. It's exactly. fucking huge. There's about 100 different companies that you can spend a lot of money to go on a little guided tour of just that peninsula. But all of those companies are owned under one umbrella. One person controls them all. They don't let anybody explore Antarctica. Well, that's not the only place that you can visit. You could visit the South Pole, you could visit Scott Base, you could visit Casey Station. All different places that you can go in Antarctica. Maybe you should try it just a little bit harder before just throwing your hands up in the air going, yeah, I tried because I asked someone if I could go and they said no, so therefore it's impossible. In fact, I'd actually suggest asking someone who has been to Antarctica before if there's any way which you could go to Antarctica because they might be able to help. It's probably a good idea though if you don't tell them that you're a flat earther because then they might look at you funny. Okay, so I know that flurfs aren't the greatest at geography, but Base Strait is nowhere near Antarctica. In fact, there's a whole state of Australia between it and Antarctica called Tasmania. And if you wanted to travel the length of Tasmania, let's say in a boat, it'd probably take you about half a day. And that does not look like a boat. 
that will be out on the water for too long. Especially considering that there were six grown men that were on that boat. So yeah, that's not the evidence that flat earthers think that it is. The whole reason for this is because of more land. Because think about it, if there's more real estate, if there's more resources, natural resources, if there's more food for our starving children, if there's more space, more room for us to get away from the child sex trafficking, if there's places where we can go and other civilizations we can be a part of, where they don't charge you for water, they don't charge you for free energy, they don't charge you for property taxes. What if there is more land? The whole, what if there is more land, actually does sound quite appealing. I would like there to be more land on this earth, but that doesn't change the shape of it. And even if we grant, okay, there are civilizations beyond Antarctica, who's to say that they don't have the same problems as us, maybe even worse? Who's to say that they aren't trying to keep us out because they don't want us bringing our problems to them? Who's to say that land beyond Antarctica is even inhabitable? Who's to say that you can even reach land beyond Antarctica? Even if flat earthers are right and the earth is flat and there are lands beyond Antarctica, we don't know anything about them. And the thing is, for there to be undiscovered land beyond Antarctica, then the earth has to be flat. They have not shown this to be the case. They can't start adding more continents on the bottom of a ball. It's just, they, they wanted it silence right away. So if there is land beyond Antarctica, go and find it then. It shouldn't be too hard. Where there is a will, there is a way. You should be able to find at least one way to get there, otherwise you're just speculating on what there could be. It actually almost sounds like you've given up before you've even tried and then based your conclusions off of that. There is evidence out there through old maps, uh, namely the thousand year old Japanese Kawawashi map, which shows continents and lands outwardly of what they call the ice shelf or the ice wall. So I've looked for that map and there doesn't seem to be any evidence for that map outside of the newspaper that it was published in. It's also pretty strange that if there is an ice wall, then they failed to put the ice wall on the map. So why are they teaching the globe model? Well, you see, the, the globe is a container and it's a container of all the known land, the Jesuits and the Freemasons. They needed a new model because they wanted a new world order. And you can't do that with the earth being flat? I feel like if you can fool an entire population about the shape of the earth, you don't need to fool the entire population about the shape of the earth in order to gain control. Because I feel like being dishonest about huge things like that is completely unnecessary and can erode away at people's trust when it comes out. Resources are very scarce because the earth is a globe, right? It's cut off, everything's cut off. If you open it up and there is more land, then there's plenty of resources. More land means more resources. Not really, because on the globe you actually do have more land. It's called the moon, except the moon is extremely hard to get to and may not have the resources that we need. There's a scene in the Truman Show where Truman is like, I want to be an explorer when I get older. I'd like to be an explorer, like the Great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. I think he missed a lot about the Truman Show. I mean, all flat earthers miss a lot about the Truman Show. Like in the Truman Show, everybody in the town had to be in on the conspiracy in order to keep it going. Have you ever heard of the eyewitness testimony written in the books, The Iron Republic, The Smoky God, Worlds Beyond the Poles? In the late 1800s, there was a series of articles written in Florida Magazine about a politician that was tired of what was going on here, got a big ship and a crew, was exploring Antarctica, and he went found a passageway through it. He popped out into the ocean, was lost for about a month. Finally, they found land with a city, and they pulled up, and it was a very advanced, quite different civilization, and a very friendly, and they stayed there, and he writes about all the experiences he had there. In the late 1800s, they were talking about more land beyond Antarctica. You know, Iron Republic sounds a lot more like fiction than fact. And also the person who wrote it, J.E. Barrington, I can't find anything about him anywhere apart from the Iron Republic. You'd think he'd come up as, oh, this person used to be an explorer or something like that. Remember, the word extraterrestrial means extra land. They're telling you that there's more land in here that they don't talk about. So the extra part of extraterrestrial comes from the Latin word extra, meaning outside. And the terrestrial part of extraterrestrial comes from the Latin word terrestris, meaning of the earth. So it means outside of the earth. I mean, if the earth is flat, then the land outside of Antarctica would still be on the Earth, so anyone coming from there wouldn't be an extraterrestrial, would they? There could be more land in some of the oceans where it's just all blue on the map. Nobody knows, you're not cruising around on big ships or flying over it on planes and looking, you know? Nobody's out there charting anything. Oh god, this more land bit of the movie just won't end. The Earth doesn't need to be flat for there to be undiscovered land in the ocean. You just need NASA to be lying to everyone. Have you heard of such a thing as no-fly zones? 
For instance, you can't fly in certain areas near the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. The reasons being is because there are lands there that um, we're not supposed to know about. They don't want those lands to be discovered. Well, the reason why Antarctica is a no-fly zone is because it's quite dangerous to fly over Antarctica. You know, Tibet is also considered to be a no-fly zone because it is quite dangerous to fly over Tibet as well. So just because a place is a no-fly zone doesn't mean that that place is harboring hidden land unless you think that there's hidden land in Tibet. Don't look at us and say, go prove it. It won't allow us to go prove it. We're not the lazy ones here. We're being restricted from going to prove this to you. So because of that, of course we're going to speculate. I have two words for you right now. Try harder. Honestly, just try harder. Talk to people that have been to Antarctica. I've done that. Ask them about ways in which you could get to Antarctica. And if one of the ways that you try to get to Antarctica doesn't work, then just try another. Because at the moment you're just throwing your hands up in the air and going, oh, it's impossible, so I guess we can't go. So we're just going to speculate about it instead. And you're speculating about it as though it's true without any evidence. In fact, I haven't heard any evidence throughout this movie so far. Just a bunch of, oh, this person said this, and this person said that. At least in the first movie, you guys tried to give some form of evidence. Allow us to go. If we go and there's nothing there, I'll admit I'm wrong. But all signs point that they're hiding more land. But what if another flat earther goes and they find no land? Are you going to accept their results or are you going to say, well, I haven't been, I need to go? Well, if there is more land and I sincerely believe that there is, then that's the perfect reason to lie to everybody. I mean, it's not just about hiding a place for, for, for more resources and where, where else we can go and dig for gas and gold. It's not about that, they're hiding freedom. They know that as soon as we all find out that there's another place to go without dictatorship, that we'd be gone. I mean, couldn't they just set up a dictatorship on lands outside of the ice wall? It wouldn't necessarily be that hard to do if they've managed to do it inside of the ice wall. What happens to the price of gold and all natural resources if there's more land? Gold can't go to a dollar an ounce. Gasoline can't go to 20 cents a gallon. We can all have, you know, thousands of acres of land to ourselves. The whole system crumbles. The entire system crumbles. Period. You know, for things like that to impact the economy here, it actually has to be feasible to get it from wherever it is to here. It does sound like it would be pretty difficult to get something from outside of the ice wall into the ice wall just simply because Antarctica is an inhospitable wasteland. On the other hand, we have uh, the north, which is also off limits. Okay, we're finally on a different topic, which I think is a good place to end this video, especially considering that they devoted way too much time just talking about more land. But yeah, that really took it out of me. I was hoping that there'd be some evidence, but there was none at all. This is what Flat Earth is now. I actually feel like the only reason that this movie was made was to try and get a bit more money, and because they probably made a bit of money off the first one. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to make videos on in the future. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Wolfie, Mori, Graymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcher Campbell, and Militant Agnostic. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, land. More land.